so far, Europe has absolutely dominated this tournament with two people already making it to the BlizzCon main stage. Big question today, can North America get on the board and how will China and the Asia Pacific region fare? Well, with that said, we begin day four of the Hearthstone World Championships, led by Kibler, Kriparian, of Rodan. Thank you very much, Rachel and Robert, and greetings from the Caster's Decks once again for day number four here at the Hearthstone World Championships. It's time to see who is going to go to the playoffs. Out of the eight remaining players, only four will survive. My name is Frode. I'm joined by Brian Kibler as well as Kriparian to my far right. Uh, gentlemen, it's been a wonderful pleasure so far casting with you guys all week long, but today we come to a close for opening week. Uh, what are some of the storylines that are sticking out to you and what you're excited for today, Brian? I mean, we saw, uh, we're going to see Jab play, I believe, in our next match, and he had an incredible comeback yesterday, just like he did against Trump in the America's Championship, where he was on the ropes, needed to draw that fireball to stay in it, and it was there for him. I, I, I uh, tweeted yesterday, you know, we, we haven't seen Jab and Archmage Antonitis in the same room. Makes okay. you think. I believe it's, it's, it's more than just fireball that was required. <laughs> his opponent had to leave his minion on the board giving him the only out, which was the last fireball in the deck, and that's exactly what he got. Yeah, um, and the, the, frankly, the same thing happened against Trump. I mean, you know, Trump mm -hmm. took a little bit of risky line, just like No Tomorrow did, and in both situations, Jab found the fireball he needed. That's right. Well, we'll see how it ends up going beyond just Jab. I mean, everything is a rematch today. Let's take a look at the groups to see what we're exactly what we're talking about. In Group A, we once again, like you see in the bottom half of the bracket, Jab versus Kuno, which you also saw happen in the very beginning of the entire tournament as well. Yeah, Jeff uh, ended up losing that one at the start. That's correct. So hopefully that's not the indication if you're cheering for USA. And Group B, we also have another rematch, Kranich versus Life Coach once again for the decider spot. Yeah, one thing that's really interesting about Life Coach's lineup, it's very good, I think, uh, against the anti-aggro lineups that players like Tice and uh, Oskaka have brought. Uh, but he did fail to beat Kranich the first time. He's going to have a second go at it now. And in Group C, we have a rematch between Hot Form and Nelio. Uh, this one went this one went Hot Form's uh, way earlier in the uh, earlier in the tournament, and uh, but it was it was a very close one. I believe it was the first three two match of the tournament, and uh, it was uh, it was a real back and forth one. That's right. Group D was first placed by Dai Meng from China. That's two players from Europe, two from China. Potentially one from APAC as Pink Ping Ho will take on Purple once more. The Shaman God, can he be the second player to advance and the second Shaman? Yeah, that was a, that was a very another very close match uh, on our on our I believe second day, uh, where uh, Purple Purple feels like he got a little bit uh, unlucky in his matchup when uh, we were talking to him at dinner the other night. Sure, uh, and he's hoping that he can get revenge and make his way to BlizzCon. That's right. That freeze mage sticks out to when he played against Pink Ping Ho. Like you know the fact that the Shaman was able to overwhelm him very quickly uh, using those Doom Hammers and being able to peck away. Huge bloodlust turn. That That's was right. I think really stood out from that particular game was mm -hmm. Pimping Ho had a 31 point attack with Bloodlust that That's really true. put purple on the ropes. <laughs> Puts well, anyone on the ropes. Puts, puts most, <laughs> most classes well, at most 31, you're ropes. mostly dead, but no, he's playing freeze base, so he actually was just on the ropes. And a little bit dead. of a buffer with the ice barrier. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll see some of that today. I'm really looking forward to it. We're about to get into action started and to kick things off. We're going to prepare for game number one between Jab versus Kano. Yeah! Versus... No! All right. Well, the match is about to get underway here. Uh, there are, I believe, three Americans, uh, or three players from the America region that are uh, still in contention yes. to qualify for BlizzCon. Uh, we have Jab, which is playing right now, and we have the two Canadians, That's which hot also purple. have uh, one and one scores in the tournament so far. Eight, eight. Asia Pacific, I was going to call it APAC uh, a few times, but Asia Pacific, to clarify the full name, has all of their players remaining. We have Kranich, Kan, uh, Kano, who you see on screen, mm -hmm. and then we also have Ping Ping Ho and Nilio. Oh, wow. So all four are fighting for contention to go into the top eight. None of them are eliminated. So again, a pretty decent showing, but it's it's right in the middle. No one's really gone through, but no one's eliminated yet. Well, and those, today those we'll see. have gone through. We, uh, you mentioned we had uh, two Europeans and two Chinese players go yes. through already. Correct. Uh, and the field, if it's if it's three Americans and four Asia Pacific players, well, with, with expected results, we should expect two players from each region uh, at sure. BlizzCon. Uh, with the exception potentially being life coach to upset somebody, we'll see because that is the next match. Transfers life coach. I'm looking forward to it. However, we are going to go into game number one. Jab versus Kano. It's going to be Tempo Mage versus the Zoo Warlock. 
Generally, this is a matchup where I'd personally rather be on the Warlock side. Uh, the Tempo Mage deck is very strong at uh, being able to get out ahead of opponents who uh, only have uh, a, a couple of cheap minions able to play with sure. removal spells. But the Warlock deck has lots of sticky minions, things like Nerubian Inc., things like Imp Gang Boss, that are very difficult to deal with the Mage's damage-based removal spells. Uh, I also just like being uh, on the side that has Voidcaller Malganus in hand. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a pretty uh, pretty good opening hand for Mikno as well. So. Uh, but it is. Oh. Jap has a reasonable start, too. That's one of the things that the mage always looks to, uh, to begin with. Some early card draw and board tempo. Um, with the Mana Worm, you benefit so much off those spell synergies. Often, and Unstable Portal could also change the dynamic of everything early game. Often a Ruby and Egg is the counter of this deck to Mirror Entity, but I believe Jab has Effigy in as well, so it's, it's kind of uh, not really a play that you'd make so deliberately as against other Temple Mage decks. <laughs> okay. Well, Young Priestess uh, comes down, and uh, you know what, even though it's only a one-mana minion, it still might make his board more resilient against things like the uh, Implosion. But for now, the Power Overwhelming draw, wow, off the top. That's a pretty nice pickup for Kano there. It could potentially allow him to remove that Mana Worm, which is threatening to get kind of out of hand. Sure. He can play the Imping yeah. Boss as well to challenge the rest of the board. Um, if uh, Mirenti does come down from the Mad Scientist, the the Void Caller would be a little bit of a bigger body than you otherwise want. But um, he does have Iron Beak Owl. Yeah. Or or an implosion he can play to not only develop his board to and neutralize part effect. of the opponent. Yeah, he, he can effectively generate minions without possibly risking giving his opponent minions from your entity. Though I believe we have seen that Jab has. Both Effigy and I think a Counterspell in his deck, if I recall correctly. Really? Wow. That's, uh, uh, I think it might be right, point. but it's, it's a bit tough. We've seen a few of these mage decks. It's very secret what exactly his secrets are, because there's a variety of them. Well, actually, I think you're absolutely right, because the only other Tempo Mage player, uh, not quite hot in the form. same uh, fashion, but it is indeed Hot Form. And Hot Form, I think, is running exactly two secrets, and they're both Mirror Entity. Yes. Okay. Makes sense. One thing that we've also noticed from this mage deck is that it it had an explosive first game in uh, in Jab's uh, first uh, first match, but it kind of really struggled to give him the win uh, in the last set, and it, he was he almost went home on it as we mentioned yeah. with with that fireball. Um, it seems like maybe he's just trying to get it out of the way. Maybe he recognized that he he requires specific matchups for this deck, and maybe less so in his other two remaining decks. This is a, uh, okay, so, so this reveals to Kano that the secret is not, in fact, Effigy, mm -hmm. and then playing Void Caller reveals that it, it is not uh, yeah, your exactly Entity, so it's Counterspell. Counter exactly. So now he definitely does not want to spend his four mana on his turn to play Implosion. Yeah, Implosion would just take his entire turn away. If this is Void Caller, it's, it's, it's so good because he can trade off and uh, play Malganus, but that is not the case. He this can actually activate with Abusive Sergeant on his opponents. He could, yes. <laughs> oh, and Knife Juggler. Play. That's an excellent play. You can yeah. Knife Juggler play Abusive on your opponent's 3-1, and then... Um, you just get Melganus down. Yeah, and you can probably juggle out the uh, the other uh, the other source of Yeah, practice. that's actually a pretty pretty interesting play. It looks like Kano may not be going for it. He may just try to uh, play the, the Juggler to just snipe his opponent's minion off. Sure, make it more resilient against um, any board clear. He's going to part ways with his Iron Beak Owl just so he can get the juggle out. He'd rather keep this Abusive Sergeant. Okay. So he does He does still have the option to use that Abusive Sergeant, perhaps to attack into a larger minion. Mm. Um, he doesn't get his... Ooh, Ooh. Speaking of larger minions, there's Toshli. That's a, a very good draw for, uh, yeah. for Jab that turn. Toshli able to potentially fuel his upcoming Flame Wakers thanks to the spare parts it puts in his hand. With Toshli into Dr. Broom, also pretty strong. Yeah, that's a very nice curve, but a pretty good curve here from Gano of uh, yeah. Malganus is coming to play for free on turn six. One of those jugglers are what he what he wanted, I believe. Um, if the two juggles actually kill the minion, he would just abusive the, uh, the knife juggler most likely. And now Kano is just in a dominating position here with this Malganus. The Void Walker, a 3-5. It's a Ascension Shield Walker for, for, for one mana. Yep. <laughs> Dr. Boom comes down. It is, it is rare that Dr. Com Boom comes down and you are massively behind on the board. Oh, wow. my. Oh, hi there, Doomguard. Nine. That uh, has to be 14. That has to be there. 18. It has to be there. That, is be that is actually a chance for lethal if the dagger... It's face, I believe. Yeah, or the, really, uh, is, is it is? The Doomguard gets plus two attack. From yeah. Oh, you're right, you're right. It's just it is just lethal. And so, if you attack wow. first with all the minions, there's no chance that the juggle will kill a Boombot and cause you to lose lethal. Yeah, and there it is. Right. So 
Kudo taking a decisive first game against Jab with his Warlock Zoo deck against Jab's Tempo Main. Yeah, it turns out a, a Void Caller that spawns out Malganus after it attacks twice and spawns Juggles from it is pretty good. Why? Um, <laughs> well, when you compare the mana cost and the stat distribution, it's roughly three times what you'd expect to get out of four mana. That's, that's a, a reasonable deal, some, some significant value there. That's so right. uh, now, Jab, he uh, he still has you know pretty solid lineup against what uh, what Kano has here though. His his tempo mage deck matches up a lot better against the Druid and the Paladin, and then I I, I know that he feels comfortable uh, playing his Hunter against anything. Okay. His freeze, uh, sorry, the tempo mage is much more important than the freeze mage, which is usually very good against one mm -hmm. and kind of weak against the other. So you definitely want to even those matchups up. The one thing that always is a big question mark, though, is if Druid happens to line up against another Druid or mm -hmm. the Paladin. Uh, both of those classes, which it feels like it could go either way, and it's not guaranteed. Yeah, Kno is playing mid-range Paladin. I know uh, in the last few days in the tournament, we've seen largely the secret Paladins uh, see play. Uh, Kno is, is kind of going a little bit against the grain, and uh, he's had had a decent amount of luck with his mid-range. I believe he's running the, the Murloc Knight variation, which uh, was Ooh. a lot of fun to see. I mean, we, got, we got the Murloc right, right here behind us, so it's sort of the, well, the How could it be there the and in his deck? <sighs> <laughs> That's right, man. How, how can there be only two Murloc Knights if there's like 15 million people in the world? I don't know the meme. Something <laughs> like that. Um, but, I mean, that's, it's, it's a good point. You know, We're not sure exactly how this series will pan out. Even though game one is in the books, a lot could happen. We're going to take a break and get to know No a little bit more. In the meantime, when we come back, game number two between Jab versus Kano. ID の由来は、えー、元は、えー、とまあなキャラクターの名前ですけど、まあ今はノーレッジの頭文字を取ったということにしています。家族や友達は私がファーストのまあ真面目にやってることは知っていて、まあお金が手に入るのでいいんじゃないという感じですね。So it's knowledge. That's what his name is. Yeah. But it's Kuno. Or Kuno. I believe it was, her, it was Kuno. Was Kuno. Who are you talking Someone, about here, right? I believe D2, one of the, the BlizzCon representatives from last year. Uh, yeah, top four lives last in, year. He lives in Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe he was. Uh, he knows uh, Kuno and was saying that, that, that that's how he pronounced that's it. That's how mm -hmm. Japanese people say his name. So I, if, I we, want, if we want it. to be so authentic. Are we not allowed to do that? Yeah, I mean, you could. You, I mean, it depends on how you want to say names, right? Like, you could say it the way the native tongues pronounces it, or you can say it the way, you know, us Westernized or you people have any number of ways. butcher it, right? Butchered the name, <laughs> like Los Angeles, right? That's kind of like yeah. how we actually call that city. Well, uh, I, I asked him about it. I, um, we asked if uh, if no is okay, and he said, yeah, it's it's not bad. It doesn't really it doesn't really matter. Are you sure? Or maybe he says no okay. No, I don't know. <laughs> Oh God! But uh, <laughs> he's like, well, uh, uh, and he just checkmated you right there, and you're like, well you're played, you're I can see. <laughs> Masterful. Right, this, this totally didn't happen. But anyway, um, he, he basically mentioned uh, that it, you know he's he's not too sensitive as some people are with uh, with the name thing. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, as in like the fight with honor. the the N O, like the the No of knowledge kind of how yeah. we pronounce it. Yeah. He said he, he doesn't he doesn't like that too much because it seems like it's a. Uh, uh, negative? Yeah. Right. It's a bit negative. And it's kind of easy to um, to forget. Is that like a hand warmer? He's, he keeps shaking. It looks like it. one of those heat packets. Yeah. I mean, it is a little chilly sometimes in the tavern. We're in California. We're, we're in a tavern in California, which in the opening line of Hearthstone Klein, it says, it's shut the door. It's cold out there. Yeah, we tr we've tried to simulate that experience to our <laughs> It players. is warm in here by the hearth, though. Yeah. We have a, we have a actual fire right behind us. Which you'll see later Don't on. Don't tell screen. the fire marshal. <laughs> well, um, we're gonna go with Paladin versus Mage. Uh, this is a matchup really that you were saying feels that. good, right? Actually, hold on. Like, he he just coined Frostbolt against the Zombie Chow. Isn't that surprising? Because if yeah. if you save the Frostbolt for next turn, you can still hit the Zombie Chow. You gain that life back anyway. But you could do it with a Sorcerer Apprentice, which means you could choose either the Zombie Chow mm. or his play on turn two. So it feels like you gain flexibility at no price. Isn't that a bit weird? It is um, unusual to see a coin Frostbolt Zombie Chow. I think his thinking was he doesn't want to pass turn one because if he put out the uh, wanted, this also the Mad Scientist to get traded pretty easily. It also allows him to play the Mad Scientist on turn two instead of being committed. What? Oh dear! What? Hold on. He's actually he's actually not far from. Uh, infinite fireballs. He has the two oh, sources. Oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> the Echo of Medea. Oh my God! 
Now he just needs Antonitis. And, um, and a lot of mana to actually cast this and keep them on play. Even more Sorcerer's Apprentices. Well, he you get all to... four of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Counter spells. All right. Well, uh, True Silver does a very good job of clearing out the seemingly powerful Spell Slinger. Uh, now Jab is, is kind of struggling a lot. Uh, it feels like it might be a turn where you just concede a minion to the second charge of True Silver sure. and just can see the fact that you might still be behind at the what end of this. I, mean, I can imagine what seeing him do. play perhaps a Sorcerer's Apprentice and pinging off the uh, the Owl there. He doesn't want to play Flame Waker because that is one of his key minions in this matchup, mm -hmm. and uh, it would die to the True Silver Champion. So well, this might be a Flame Waker play with if he's playing the Mana Worm, if he's reaching for the I would Mana imagine he plays Mana, if he, he played Mana Worm ping instead of Sorcerer's Apprentice ping. Because Sorcerer's Apprentice, playing the two Sorcerer's Apprentice in a single turn can give him multi-mana discounts on mm -hmm. spells, though. So it's possible that right. he'd rather potentially sacrifice the Mana Worm. That's a good point. The Mana Worm is also something that... It, it needs a lot of um, immediate synergy to, like, impact it a lot. Otherwise, it just becomes a very vanilla minion. Well, he has uh, set up a counter spell for that Demon Heart that, uh, that Kuno has. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he's assured that there is a spell in Nose Hand. <laughs> Demon Heart's a very interesting card because you can use it on friendly demons, but only Warlock is the class that gets demon. I don't believe there's a neutral demon in this set. There is a neutral demon. It is the... Uh, um, oh, Illidan. There is Illidan, and there's also um, Imp Master. The Imps are demons. Oh, yes. The oh, imps come off oh the three-mana card that damages itself yes. to spawn in. Really? That's fascinating. I did not know that. That's, uh, today I it makes sense. It makes sense now that you think about it. It's like mm -hmm. Imp Master, but um, wow, crit. nice job. <laughs> Why didn't you win Jeparino? Because it's hard to remember things when it counts. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, Jab, I, I think Jab may be uh, ca caught in the allure of this Sources Apprentice, Sources Apprentice <laughs> Echo here. He's, he's doing a lot to, to not play one of these. He does play the, the Mirror Entity. I guess he goes with the ping here and can clear a bunch of his opponent's board. I would be I would be caught up in the allure of the possibility you'd, of getting all these. You'd really <laughs> you'd really need to get that ping though. I mean, yeah. uh, get pinging off a two one creature is just such a power play. Yeah, and this other uh, uh, Kuno is able to play his Murloc Knight into the mirror entity with that true silver charge back. So he's able to still kill. The he Murloc has he has to his... attack it first because if if he gets like a, a, a Murloc war leader, war leader yeah. it <laughs> actually buffs it out of range. That's really good observation, and the Heads sequencing is perfect. Silt, uh, Siltfin, Spirit Walker, pretty powerful Murloc, the highest cost Murloc that you can actually get off of. Oh Murloc man, Knight. what are we <gasps> playing now? The dream! The combo! Although, he needs to <laughs> He needs to have survive. He needs for a lot of things to happen. He needs, he needs to duplicate uh, those sorcerers. He doesn't have he to duplicate. Four. What, what he really needs, I think, is like a Spell Slinger into a Frost Nova, just to shut out his uh, two sorcerer friends from dying from the previous turn. Right, well, he is getting the Echo off from the Spell Slinger. I mean, it is value. Yeah. yeah, but now, like, the uh -oh. Murlocs oh, are just going to rampage uh -oh. out of control. Uh oh, yeah, now that he has also Quartermaster in hand. Yeah, so Kuno can uh, just use his hero power, make a Murloc, make an, a uh, Silverhand Recruit. Yeah. Oh, dear. Wow. Kuno, that's what I call yeah. value. <laughs> he raises his hands, like, well, what do you want me to do? All right, well, I guess I, guess I have it all. Is there a secret up right now? Uh, there, there is. is. It's counter the counter spell, okay. and Kuno has just played nothing but minions each right. turn since then. And this is this is a very difficult board for Jab to come back from. Even if he had something like a flame strike, which I don't believe we've seen played this deck. Yeah, yeah. wow. He just concedes on the spot. So Kuno off to a decisive two-game lead against Jab here. Jab is one game away from going home. As much as I really love players bringing these like wild. In some cases, they may not be experimental because they've had good results in the past, but they certainly look experimental to the me. Tempo mages, right? Well, right. I mean, this is a deck that Jab has actually had a lot of success with in the recent past. Mm -hmm. He played it in a, a, a large tournament uh, in California the weekend before the America's Championship yeah. at the Esports Arena. He played it at the America's Championship where he made the top four. Mm -hmm. So this is a deck that, that that Jab knows very well and has had a lot of success with, uh, and it's done very very consistent for him up to this just, point. Yeah, just not in the very recent past here at uh, the BlizzCon Qualifier Tournament. Yeah. Um, it's, I mean, it, the, the opening game was so crushing, I was rooting for the deck. I mean, I'm still rooting for the deck because I love the fact that players are bringing such crazy creations to mm -hmm. the table. Um, but on, on the other hand, uh, I think yesterday it went like 2-1, uh, and, and right now it's 0-2. Oh 
So yeah, uh, you're right. It's struggling. One and four yep. over the last two days so far. And uh, I mean, in best of five formats, that is a lot of losses in one specific point. I mean, you pick up an excellent point. Uh, the idea is that for every time it succeeded, it definitely has you know, some variance to it. It won't win every game either. So mm -hmm. even though he's succeeded with it, he's losing where it matters the most. Because if, if he loses one more game, <laughs> Kano is going to be going to the round of eight, and Jab will be stopped here. But this is the matchup that he's looking for uh, out of Kuno's lineup. This is the best matchup for his Tempo Mage deck, the the Druid, where cards like Mirror Entity uh, really shine, and where he can gain a, a significant tempo advantage from those Mana Worm openings. All right, well, uh, Kuno has the Innervate, which uh, is pretty effective. He also has the Darnassus, but he's, he's unable to really play mm. anything here, and he's going to have to make some tough decisions um, if he wants to innervate a Shredder or play the Darnassus. And Jab's hand is only okay here. He's drawn two of his secrets, which are really cards that you want to get off of your Mirror Entities. Uh, they don't, you don't really want to pay the full, uh, the full retail price of three mana for them. <laughs> yeah, retail right. pricing is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get very competitive you gotta pricing. Get them on sale, <laughs> you know? They, they, they come with the mad scientist. My prices are mad! Well, what do you think about this play? Uh, he can actually charge out a Drew the Claw to guarantee the, uh, the trade. But at the same time, against three mana, Where you're probably not struggling it? much with a taunt Drew the Claw either. I mean, the worst thing that could happen is it's Flame Cannon, fireball. which would kill it anyway. Coin yeah, if fireball, he fireball coin here, fireball. it would be pretty excellent. Uh, I oh, that would be excellent, because I actually have four attack on the mana. Yeah, one. yeah. Would you have actually reconsidered that because of that option? I I, I still like Jab's play. Uh, this, If he had charged it, he's, open to, he's open to a lot more uh, things that go wrong that he ends up behind on the board as well, I think. So here, we're just going to see yeah, the Arcane Blast, Mirror and just trade in. So this removes, uh, removes the... Drew to the cloth from Kuno and gives Jab the Mirror Entity, which is pretty strong. It's extremely strong against Druid hands, yeah. especially the ones that have ramp, because often ramps are the large portion of your spell. You have to imagine that most of the other cards are just bigger creatures that you'd really want to try to play. And uh, no, I mean, he has to make the play because uh, he knows he's up against Mirror Entity, he knows he's up against Effigy, he knows he's up against Counter Spell. So even I mean, in the worst situation, he still doesn't have a choice. Right. But he, he absolutely just has to go for it every time. I mean, he does have the option to possibly have just played Keeper of the Grove and, sh and oh, shot his one of space. Oh, I don't like that at all. I know. I, I, I'm, just, I'm just walking through the yeah. possible options here. But uh, that would end up going poorly for him as well. So this... Speaking of poor results, the Shredder does pop out a 2-1, which means it does get killed off by that hero power. None of that, but it, it stays alive this turn. You deal with the board, and you have a very nice effigy setup. Yeah, and this is, this is pretty scary for Kuno here because uh, he can think that this is... Uh, I don't know if he, he we've seen two mirror entities in the same game out of Jad. He does have quite a few, uh, quite a few secrets. Mm -hmm. So here, Kuno can actually just play the Azure Drake into the secret Oh, Ooh, boy. that's a very Fireworks. good draw. Yeah, he has to frost both, though. He doesn't want to trade off his 4 1 because that's the most likely yeah. creature to die. He wants the most potential value out of the That's yeah. right. This does offer a pretty nice swipe for Kuno next turn. It does, but who is hiding behind that pilot shredder? It's, it's still fine. Like, really, a jab absolutely needs the effigy trigger this turn because if he plays Dr. Boom, it'll probably trigger on a boom bot. And this is a, a heads up play from Kuno here playing. Oh, the, wow. happy Halloween! <laughs> oh dear. That is one All of the right. scariest oh, things. And what? the drive speed! <laughs> All right. As, as, far as, as far as possible effigies are concerned, that's one of the less scary ones. But wow. the totem gold coming out of the shredder, that's scary. I, I think both these I outcomes both are reasonably scary. Yeah, I scary. think they're both very scary because the druid is really running very low on life right now. Mm -hmm. And, and that weighed into uh, basically the stickiest minion yeah. in the entire game. <laughs> well, it, it, is, it is a minion that, that you know, it at least if stickiest. it stays in play, yeah, yeah the stickiest. Yeah. But if it stays in play, it's, it's only doing one damage every turn, and it's not putting a huge amount of immediate pressure. But Dr. Boom, that's a lot of immediate pressure. It's yeah. also one of the prettiest cards in the game. If you, got oh, it's, go it's if you want to craft one golden well, card. Fireball here will actually give him the game. Jab is known for drawing fireballs when they will win the game. Uh, it said two I think, damage. I believe, that's, I believe that's a Flame Waker into Double Arcane oh, Missiles. Yeah. Okay. So that's, uh... That can also win. Kind of like a Fireball, except... Well, maybe it's and just... And the Boombots <laughs> can close the gap if required. Yeah, this this looks like it is... Yeah, that's yeah, just, just game right, right there. there. Wow, good stuff. So after losing two games with this Tempo Mage deck, Jab picks up the, the game against Kuno's Druid deck. And, uh, he's not done yet. He's not done yet. He's staying alive in the tournament. Game three gives him some life, but...
He has to beat this Druid deck three times in a row, and he used well, one of his best decks to do it. What we've seen so far from Jab is um, in, in his opening game against No, he actually just had really bad luck with his Hunter. He is playing mid-range Hunter. He had the better opener every time, but he actually got crushed in the mid-range every time playing mid-range Hunter. So that, that kind of sucks. Um, but really what we've seen in the later stages of the tournament, and, and today especially, is the mage deck really struggling. And it is an aggressive deck. So my main concern for Jab, because the players are have to stick to their decks for the uh, the end BlizzCon tournament, um, the players who have already qualified are actually playing decks that really punish aggressive decks. So mm -hmm. not only do we have a deck that has uh, been fairly inconsistent, but has to actually beat lineups that are completely countering. Yeah. Well, uh, it's, it's a tough road to come back from, but it's not impossible. Uh, Jab did struggle a little bit, not just um, being able to win with his mages, but he's also been struggling uh, to just, just get to the finals every single time. Last year, he got stopped in the Americas Regional, similar to Nyria and Tice, two players who have also gone through that journey as well. And he had a little bit to say about it when we sat down with him. Uh, I think the moment I qualified for this tournament was the happiest point of my Hearthstone career so far because last year I made it to regionals as well and just fell short so it's good to be able to finally achieve this. Since I was so close last year I knew for sure that I could improve and then finally get to where I wanted to be as a player. Well he doesn't want to go home here. It is one game away still from elimination. Kuno is one game away from being the first Japanese player to make the top eight playoffs in BlizzCon for the Hearthstone World Championships. First Two really Asia cool stories. Pacific player. First Asia Pacific player this year. Yep. Lot on the line. Um, I mean, Jab made it uh, certainly a stage higher than last year, but That's progression. Uh, he, he doesn't want to end here. Nobody wants to end here. Uh, all the games we have for you guys tonight are going to be uh, for those spots, for those That's critical right. spots to be able to play at BlizzCon to eventually become the Hearthstone World I must Champion. Protect and, uh, not also, surprisingly, uh, go ahead. Oh, uh, well, I'm just saying, the, it's also the last USA member. So, you know, for the Homeland America <laughs> to keep on the torch that Firebat has passed. Well, there are, there are two representatives of, of Crips Homeland here. We do still have two yep. Canadians. <laughs> it's true. Uh, uh, I personally think, in my completely unbiased opinion, that it would be even Ooh, more amazing if Canadians took home the, uh, <laughs> the win in the end. Uh, so I wouldn't mind here. passing the torch that way. <laughs> jab here. Oh! oh. With his mid-range hunter deck, this is the deck Welcome that Jab to is the grand tournament. <laughs> this deck that Jab is the most known for. He uh, he made a name for himself even before he had a lot of tournament success uh, as a player who innovated on hunter strategy, specifically mid-range hunter. And this is a deck that has brought him uh, very far. And unsurprising that he's relying on it when he's back against the wall here. The bow is such a huge play here. It's just yes. the absolute perfect answer. And not only does it answer that card, it sets up for a tempo play next turn as No is back on three mana now that he's yep. uh, triggered the death rattle. So um, really anything he plays there is, is not going to fare too well against the bow of, uh, of Jeff from last turn. Kudo does have that wild growth. Uh, so he's able to set up to potentially play either Drew to the Claw or Azure Drake next turn, while Jab has a decision to, between playing this Haunted Creeper or just playing a Houndmaster by itself. He yeah, he's, he's been cornered crack. into Houndmasters, like solo Houndmaster plays many times throughout this tournament. But uh, I think this is an opportunity to really play one. The Freeze Trap uh, will likely protect the Haunted Creeper because it, you, you're really never going to waste the spell to kill a Haunted Creeper. You're just not going to do that, right? It's 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 tough to get rid of a Haunted Creeper without giving away quite a bit of value here. Uh, though speaking of speaking of which, Jab actually picked up a Web Spinner, which is another possible option for him to uh, boost with that Houndmaster. Yeah, the thing is because he has the Freeze Trap up, um, I, I think he's not really interested in clearing the Druid of the Claw, even though he can. Maybe. I mean, he, he has the option to potentially uh, attack with his bow, boost his spider, clear off the druid, and play the web spinner, leaving himself with a uh, reasonable amount of stuff on board. His, that board would be very vulnerable to swipe, however. Yes. Yeah. Oh. But swipe would take the entire turn. However, he also does miss out on potentially getting the Houndmaster value. So this is the most stats on board, which I can get behind. And and the trap value, it would uh, cycle another charge on his weapon. This right. does does give Kuno an excellent opportunity to use Keep of the Grove to silence that minion. Yeah. Uh, and now, the Wrath will take out the Houndmaster. 
leaving, super value. Yeah, leaving jab without the ability to easily clear off this Druid of the Claw. He well, does, the, ooh, the kill he, command is still pretty useful here. It is. He can use kill command in, in one of his minions to clear off the Druid. That does allow Kuno to return his Keeper with that Freezing Trap the next turn, however. Um, oh, well. Uh, I mean, that's kind of a big deal. The the Keeper of the Grove is one of the answers to high main if the game becomes an attrition battle, which is starting to become the scenario that they're using a lot of their resources, and yet neither of them are like, yeah, but in danger of a being A six-mana cool. Keeper of the Grove isn't isn't really that great of an answer to high main. It's, it's about if the response is on board, though. Like, so yeah. it knows cards are going to be stronger card for card outside of the Dr. Boom. Oh, that's a good kill command now. Uh, he ended up getting a minion he could play along with it from the web spinner. Yeah, this does make his turn significantly stronger because previously he was in a position where he would be forced to essentially just cast kill command and do nothing else. But getting the, the Raptor off of web spinner gives him a little bit of a uh, little bit of additional value here. Yeah, I think here, even though he, um, you know, we'll be able to replay the uh, Keeper of the Grove after a Freeze Trap. That just makes it so uh, you get a clean Doctor Boom. And you, you're you're totally into that one. And Jab does still have the Eagle Horn Bow up. Uh, Eagle Horn Bow gains an additional charge anytime the uh, a, one of your traps is triggered. So uh, here, Kuno does have the opportunity to return his Keeper with the Freezing Trap, but right. he doesn't want to give Jab an extra charge. I think also because he has Force of Nature, which can activate that, mm -hmm. and then he can use his Keeper to stay on board and have better combat. Um, I really like the double trade here. Double trade and playing the Doctor Boom is very strong. It looks like he is deciding to use his Bow Charge, however. I think he may, he may recognize that That's Kuno, not, not going to happen. Yeah, that he He's may not getting that, that extra charge. Well, or, or even that the, the pace of this game is such that the extra charge is less important than having the additional minion on the board. Okay. That could be the case. Uh, Kno draws the Innervate, which gives him access to 10 mana. That can potentially allow that him is, to play both Force of Nature yeah, and, and swipe. swipe. That is a board clear, I believe. So, uh, oh, no, Kno is on the boom bots, I believe. Well, you would attack first and then swipe. Right. So oh, yeah, okay. it, it, it is a board clear. Then, so yeah. You're yeah. able to the Dr. Boom, the 2-4 into the uh, Raptor, and then uh, Mercy yep. of the Boot Bots. <laughs> Just cross your fingers. They are not merciful. Spoiler alert. Throw some salt over the shoulder. No. Yeah. No Mercy. You know what? No oh, Mercy. Oh, they were oh, somewhat okay. merciful. Okay. So <laughs> he did dodge some of those cracks in the sidewalk before he got to his match today. Okay. I think we're actually going to see maybe even uh, just a silence play here. Well, he could squeeze in the hero power and then play Houndmaster. He did, his opponent did use two rats. Um, th the reason why Freezing Trap is feels weak, though, is because you know your opponent bounced a tree ant back. Right, yeah. So he can just play another tree ant. Yeah, this, and then this is a little, a little unusual choice from Jab here to just play this Freezing Trap when he does have that information. Uh, Kuno has you the opportunity to play to something, though. You can't play nothing. You have to play a Houndmaster. It's a, it's a very rough spot for Jab here, for sure. It doesn't die to that tree ant. It's true. Fortunately. Oh, that is quite the draw, considering that he can he bounce, can bounce the tree and back and, and make it cheaper. It. Yeah. <laughs> tree for <Wow>. two. <clears throat> yeah, this Dude, <laughs> this tree <laughs> and a lot of he work. He has the biggest case of being blue balled. He just wants to go in and attack, but he just can't. <laughs> He's getting denied. I think after this game, Chad will never watch Bob Ross play again. <laughs> <laughs> it's got, it just you this know can't handle beautiful. the trees. The happy, happy little tree. <laughs> Wonderful. No mistakes, no misplays. <laughs> Just happy treants. Oh god. <laughs> no, he's counting, by the way, in case uh, he might have some ability to close out the game with two uh, two chargers in hand. That yeah, makes it's not, Savager it's not really quite powerful. there. Mm -hmm. it, a Savager would be lethal, actually. Right, if he but, was able uh, to. But he, he doesn't currently have that card. But he's got two sticky minions. One good shredder deserves two others. Yeah, 22 life, you're really not afraid. Yeah. Um, I mean, you might be a little bit afraid because you're trying to play nothing with three cards in hand. You know there's some bad things headed your way, but um, playing the double shredder makes it a, a situation where it's almost impossible your opponent will be able to prevent, prevent them from yes. doing anything next turn. Animal Companion. There's, I don't think, an Animal Companion who can really get Jab out of this. Leoc, oh, well, Leoc ooh, does help. A bad start. Leoc, with this Unleash, is pretty strong. Yes. He, also he, is, he also could get, like... Another way to buff some of those dogs, right? Um, oh, wait, based off the positioning, no, the, though. 
positioning is problematic, but he didn't really have a choice in the matter. Mm -hmm. Unless he played Unleashed first before the off. What? Ooh. Okay. Haitian Assassin. Right. Could I even collapse? He says, you know what, bravo. <laughs> What if what if you just taunt Leok here? That's good enough, and you it just is, go face. That is actually quite for powerful. Six. Yeah, no, this is actually this is a, a good turn of events from Jab here. Garrison, you see that patient assassin on the screen? It is a uh, yeah, deadly touch minion, as it were. It is uh, that that minion. Anything it touches dies, got a except blade. for divine shield. <laughs> That's something that uh, I found out the hard way. Well, doesn't damage them. When I was first playing Harson, I was like, okay, and then just got wrecked. Alright, so, so that is six health. That was a really big turnaround. Oh, Savage my Roar, goodness. though. We have two charges in the hand. That I, think I believe that's that it. might be enough. Yeah, I think Each that's of those lethal. charges, yeah, that we're gonna see a cat yeah, come down. Certainly. That happy little tree, he's happy he gets under the action here. That's right. And guess who just got his ticket to the round of eight playoffs? It is Kuno from Japan as he is going to Savage Roar and close it out, sending the final American player home. Final USA player. <laughs> Well, you consider yourself American, Crip. North American. Yeah. I saw you eating some fries yesterday. You played the America's Championship. <laughs> yeah. Some freedom fries you were eating yesterday. Were they, they delicious? Uh, what did they taste like, Crip? Half of them were. They were like freedom chips. Those weren't very really good. It tasted like democracy is the answer to that question. That's oh, my bad. <laughs> it's a 3-1 victory for Kano as he is the first Japanese player in HWC history to make it to the round of eight. Congratulations. What a wonderful uh, set of events to be able to see him come all the way here to America. And I feel like he just played that pretty solidly using pretty right. solid decks. Yeah. Uh, and the real problem that game was was really the mage. Uh, Jab realized that he'd probably struggle to get a win. Mm -hmm. So he just threw it out there and threw it out there again. And then threw it out there the third time. The third and, time he got the win, but it was yeah. a pretty big disadvantage to come back from. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, it just so happened that I think a lot of players uh, coming into this tournament teched a lot of their decks to be able to deal with aggressive decks. Mm -hmm. And when you have that issue plus the possible inconsistency yes. of the randomness nature of the mage tempo deck, uh, bad things can happen. And unfortunately for Jab, it happened to him. Yeah, it's one of those things where you can very clearly see that Kuno was anticipating a lot of Druid. That's what he wants to target with the Zulok, with Paladin, which is generally one of the better decks against the Druid. And then you have you know the Druid be able to, to face off against it as well. Um, and, and so Jad was trying to avoid playing the Druid and make it more of his anchor. Like, I'll use this as my final win. Mm -hmm. But when you lose like against the Zoo and you have that Hunter still up, it's like, that's painful. You want to be able to get that Hunter win very quickly. And uh, as a result, even though Jab does end up falling here, I think he had a great run. And I think Kuno's dream is still alive. He's waiting with Rachel for a couple of words about qualifying for the round of eight. That's right, Dan, I'm here with our winner. And I want to ask, you look so serious when you're sitting in that chair, but you're such a, a happy guy. What are you thinking about that's so stressful? Besides the game, of course. Like, well, uh, if I lose this game, I have if, even if I lose, I have to stay in America uh, one more week. But if I lose, I have nothing to do. So I didn't want to win this. That's why. You didn't want to be stuck in California with nothing to do for a week. That's a heck of a reason to win. Now, uh, I want you to tell me a little bit about the Japanese Hearthstone scene. You recently received the Japanese language client, and a lot of the pros are really excited. Yeah, that's true. Um, maybe a number of um, Japanese player increase because uh, due to Japanese version and yeah that's pretty good a lot more competition for you right <laughs> so the last question I have is you were a competitive RTS player you played MOBA competitively and now you're a professional Hearthstone player what was it about Hearthstone that you really loved as a competitive game um, because that's just because I'm good at Hearthstone that's why I say it's no reason. Just because you're good? Yeah. That's a heck of a reason to play. I'm going to give it back to our casters. Don't go anywhere. We got more games for you. Words from Kuno Senpai himself. <laughs> Turns out the Japanese server is pretty good, Crib. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, I can say that in my YouTube video as well. Uh, that's a really good opportunity to just, you know, talk a little bit about the amazing diversity that we do see from the backgrounds of players. You know, a lot of people don't really anticipate Jap uh, Japan being able to get this far 
Uh, but is that really a big surprise for you, Kibler? No, the the, uh, the Japanese players have a lot of uh, history of success in other collectible card games, and uh, you know, there's a period they were ex actually exceedingly dominant. So seeing Japanese players do very well in Hearthstone yeah. is not at all surprising. I think just seeing a wide diversity of players from everywhere doing well in Hearthstone is no surprise. I mean, uh, Hearthstone's a game where uh, you know if, if if you really pick your spots, if you put the time in, if you if you just practice a lot, uh, you can be great player we've seen players you know as, as young as 13 i believe qualify yeah. for uh for blizzcon and i wouldn't be surprised if uh next year we we have uh you know a retired american or anything like that qualify. <laughs> i'm not that old crib we'll not see that old. Okay. Ooh, wow <laughs> well uh we're gonna diffuse a little bit of that tension off stream but in the meantime we're going to thank all of our sponsors that helped make this possible make sure to check out all their products as well for they supporting us for the hwc 2015 which is the hashtag on social media let us know what you think your predictions especially for the upcoming matches good life coach versus Kranish, the rematch for the top eight when we return in the meantime check out these highlights brought to you by windows 10 game ddr